So today I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a project that our curatorial department is working on. You know, we get a lot of great pieces of artwork here at the museum, but they do need to be maintained and we do have a big sculptural piece being cleaned today. So I'm going to put my mask back on and we'll go and see what's happening. So we're here back in our dock area and we have artist Mitzi Sabato, who is, we have moved her, her piece, Grudge Harvest, back here in our dock area and she's gonna turn the vacuum off, okay. <laughs> hey Mitzi. Hey. So I'm just doing a little really quick. Really captive. <laughs> That's all right. Doing a quick behind the scenes, just to let people know some of the things that go on. Um, uh, some of the upkeep and maintenance of the great artwork that we get through here. So uh, these are rocks, but not really. Okay. They're imitating rocks, heart-shaped rocks. Yeah. And they're made of mixed media. And I really, Brandy, who is a curator of the uh, permanent collection, is helping. Let me clean it. I really didn't think about how much dust it would get. And we disassembled the grudge harvest to get to the pieces. And not only was there dust, but cigarettes and oh no, chewed up gum and wrappers. There was a button in there. There's besides a million dust bunnies. So the masks are kind of good in a way. And um, this piece and the other piece of mine that the museum owns are older pieces of mine. They were done in the 80s when I was working very mixed media in the sense that I combined a lot of materials to imitate surfaces. So looking rock-like, but it isn't, or looking ice-like, but it isn't. Different, mm -hmm. see there's some of the dust. Oh <laughs> yes. It's gross. <laughs> so, um, this piece, when it has the roof and the vent on, which oh, is over this there, is, the top. Yeah. is um, a corn crib. But instead of corn, it has this mean little harvest of stone hearts that are locked. And they're my visualization of grudges. That grudges are things we keep locked in our heart. Of course, very hard to open. It's very hard to give up your grudges. <laughs> because right. we all think we're justified. Right. So in a sense, the grudge harvest is me at that time with many of my grudges. So we're just trying to clean it. A lot of pieces in the collection have this issue. Right. And uh, I don't know if you want me to talk about what these materials are. Sure. But um, these materials are a commercial paper mache called celluclay. The um, texture is purposefully made on each one of them. A lot of them are different. Some of them have like a shale-like texture to them. Other ones look more chalk-like mm -hmm. and it's mixed with a commercial um, material, hydrophilic plastic called Roplex, which is the base for Elmer's glue and uh, floor waxes, all sorts of stuff. Um, it also gases out, so you have to be careful using it. Oh, um, okay. It's not the healthiest thing to breathe in. Yeah, here's some example. more ice. And I was saying to Brandy, oh, yeah. that these were different cast sheets of Roplex, and if I was to put a hair dryer on it, it would become more translucent. And it probably was more translucent when the piece originally came to the museum. And I could make it so again. Mm -hmm. So this piece and the other piece, womb, were all before I had a child, which I had in 1994. And um, I'm the daughter of a psychoanalyst, so they're all very introspective and related to the size of my own body. Um, so this is commercial aluminum, which was bent and uh, bolted together. This is aluminum wire fencing. Some people call it horse fencing. 
we don't use it with our horses. It has some welded steel rod in it. This is bent aluminum that's riveted together. And then this piece is actually a real ventilated top. So all corn cribs are made this way and it's so that the corn dries. That's ah. for feed corn. Oh, so okay. it dries on the cob and doesn't mold. So it's up on legs, little legs. Might walk around with it carrying its little grudges. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the further back you get, the more, um, the more it looks like rocks. And then as you get up, then you see that they're heart shaped and that a lot of them have locks on them. Some of them look like they might open, mm -hmm, possibly. Right. So, well, that was my experience when I first saw it. I, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, oh, th that's really cool. You know, there's rocks in there. And then, yeah, when I got up close, it was like, oh, those are all hearts. <laughs> and of course, I wasn't really thinking about other people, but only about yeah. myself when I made uh -huh. it. But um, most of my work, I like it to have something identifiable on the surface or the shape of it to draw the viewer into a dialogue with the pieces. And then whatever that dialogue is, I don't really mind whatever direction they go in um, because then the work takes on a life of its own. So the docents say that the little kids really like this piece. And so I'm really happy that there's something that everybody can relate to with this. Nice. Well, and thanks. That's the story. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about you. Your beautiful beast. My pleasure. All Thank right. You.